Well, like I said, why bother with all this trouble? It seems like quite a lot of trouble just to make a form of the chord you probably won't even use in the piece. Well, the real answer, answer is this. Pitch class sets, or set theory, unlike series, don't depend on order. In other words, the idea is not that first one, two, three, four, five. Pitch class set is just a package of intervals, really. That's all it is, okay? So the really important thing about a pitch class set is what we just explained, the interval vector. The vector tells you all the intervals contained in the chord, okay? And that's going to be good no matter what spacing or no matter what arrangement you have of it, because since interval vectors include interval classes, it could be a minor second or a major seventh, but it still gives you the same general category of interval. So like I said, the vector, vector is just a list showing all the intervals contained in a chord. And remark again that it includes non-adjacent ones. In other words, if you look at set 520 again, that's example 9, you'll notice that there are two major thirds. One of them is the obvious one between 3 and 7, but there's another one between the last note E and the first note G sharp. I don't repeat it because I'm not going to repeat the same pitch, but that means those two notes still give you the equivalent of a major third. Okay, so actually we have two examples of major thirds in this particular set. So the vector gives you a sort of profile of the set in terms of intervals. Little note, by the way, it can happen sometimes that two sets which are not the same have the same vector. Okay, having the same vector doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly the same set. Okay. Those sets are called Z-related sets, but for our purpose, it's not very important. What's really interesting from the composer's point of view is different kinds of interval vectors. Because the vector tells you the interval character of the set, this can give you a distinct musical character as well. Generally speaking, there are three kinds of vectors that are of interest to us. The first kind, we'll see in example 10, is, let's say with set 5-9, that's this one, all the interval classes are present. You notice the vector is 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1. That means there's no interval missing whatsoever. So this little five note chord here contains any interval you want to include. Okay? I should mention that once the sets get big enough, once you get up to six and more notes, you can't have a set without all the intervals present, which is going to be one reason I'm going to recommend that when you're using this in a compositional way, usually smaller sets are more useful than larger sets because they tend to have a definite character. Anyway, we'll come back to that. Second kind of interval vector that's interesting to us is when some intervals are completely absent. Let's look at example 11. That's a four note set. That's exact set number four, number six. The vector is 210021. That means this set has no minor thirds and no major thirds. So that will give you a definite character, the fact that some intervals are completely missing. There's no way combining the notes that we have in that set that I'm going to get a major or a minor third anywhere in there, or their inversions. The, the last kind of interval vector that can be interesting is when you have one interval or one interval, one interval class predominating. Let's look at example 12, okay, which is... Well, if you look at the vector, it's 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1. That means there's a lot of semitones, only one fourth, only one tritone, only one major third. So again, the character of this set is going to tend toward cluster type harmony, harmony by seconds. So the reason I mentioned these three kinds of vectors is because they have a definite character. Once you get into a vector where all the intervals are present numerous times, as far as specific character, it's going to depend on the spacing and the detailed arrangement, not on the set itself. So as I said, large sets are less likely to have a definite character than smaller ones. It's a little bit like polychords, where at a certain point, adding more notes just makes the result heavy and gray, as opposed to adding specific character. Of course, we can space the chord in a very specific way, but PC sets, by definition, don't concern spacing. So spacing, you can certainly use spacing to make it audible, but then you have to keep the same spacing, which is not really part of using sets in the first place. Okay, last thing I want to say about the general idea is that sometimes when you're using a PC set, you need variety, so you might use what's called the complement. For example, if you look at example 13, the set, the first set is, that's set 532, okay, 01469. You might use that for a while and then use the complement. The complement is simply the notes in the scale that aren't in the set. So if you've been using one transposition of a set for a while and you're sort of stuck on those notes, sometimes you'll just want to have 
the other nodes. In other words, the complement of the set. In the table in Wikipedia, in, in the other four tables, you will just see that the complement is usually listed to the right. So a three-note set has a nine-note complement, a four-note set has an eight-note complement, and so forth. By the way, one other detail. Uh, there is one other classification of the sets. Elliot Carter made his own list. It comes out to the same thing, but the numbers are different. In the Wikipedia page, it gives you the Carter numbers as well as the fork numbers, but most people use the fork numbers.